worship service streaming live here at 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday. My name is Chanson Esparza. I'm one of the pastors here at Manchac United Methodist Church. And I'm so glad to be worshiping with you on this special, most holy of days. This service, I hope that you stick in for the entire time. We've got some great music, worship songs that you can sing along with from home. We've got uh, Pastor Jason preaching later today. Um, earlier, we at here at 8.30, we had a live stream worship service. It was completely different than this one. So perhaps later today or later this week, you might want to go back and check that out if you haven't. Pastor David preached. He wore his robes. Um, it was in the sanctuary. It was a beautiful service. So I hope that you check that as well. Um, every weekday for the past few weeks and into the future, we're doing a segment at noon called Nourishment at Noon, where a different... Um, ministry leader here at the church offers something to connect with you to, and to help you connect with God. So that is happening each day at noon on our Facebook page. Um, make sure you comment at some time today in the chat while we are worshiping together just to let us know you're here, to let each other know you're here. This is a special way that we can uh, communicate with each other. Also, if you didn't know, we also, we also have a Facebook group page called Manchac UMC Group. So if you haven't connected with us on there, we're doing a lot of extra pictures that stuff that y'all can post as well as leaders of the church, but it's been a lot of fun um, getting to be in community through that Facebook group page. So, so find that. Um, I think that's all I have to announce. I'm so glad you're here and we're going to invite Mark to do a reading for us. On this resurrection morning, hear these words of encouragement. Hold your head high, Christ has risen. Death has been conquered. Christ has restored us to new life. All that is broken has been made whole. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Hold your head high, Christ has risen. From a triumphant Palm Sunday to a dark Friday, passing through sorrow, through death, to life and joy, we arrive at Easter. We know that joy and sorrow, life and death, are bound together. By the power of God, the, Christ could, the cross could not defeat Christ. The tomb could not hold him. Hold your head high. Christ has risen. Carry forward God's healing. Carry it to a world where truth and justice triumph over evil and oppression. We have been called out of death and into new life. Rejoice! Life bursts through death. Jesus Christ is alive forever. Alleluia.
over a period of time um, in constant prayer and and um, I was reflecting on the situation that the disciples were in before Jesus came back and just kind of the fear that they had and we read about it in John 20 uh, where they were huddled up in a house terrified for their lives that um, the authorities would come and arrest them too they were they had just seen their leader killed and it was just them in their house trying to be quiet not even maybe wanting to go out to the outhouse um, well Jesus appeared through those locked doors to them on Easter and in the midst of their terror he came and so I'm going to read this, uh, this prayer that my friend wrote, um, and then pray for us. God, we are caught up in fears of things known and unknown. As the disciples huddled in a house fearful after Christ's death, so we too tend to lock our doors. We forget that when we lock our doors, nothing can enter, neither the bad nor the good. But perfect love doesn't need a door. Christ has appeared among us, even so. Into our darkest, most fearful places, Jesus, you have walked right in. Into our most doubtful moments, Jesus has spoken peace. We saw in his wounds the evidence of death and pain upon him, our worst fears realized in his flesh. What we learn is that our worst fears are not the end. Life has overcome death. Joy has overcome pain. Love has overcome fear. The one who went before us straight into the heart of darkness, the risen Christ has overcome the world. Breathe upon us, Lord Jesus, the breath of hope and peace, the breath of perfect love, the breath of the Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you for these words and for your hope. God, we cling to that hope and we recognize it especially today. Lord, I know many of us have locked doors, closed doors, but we know that you have entered into our homes and our hearts no matter what that door is doing, God. So I pray that even as we are separate today, with just a couple of us here in the church building and our real church out there in their own homes, God, I am encouraged to know that you are in each of those places right now. May our people feel your presence in this moment and feel your hope. In Jesus' name, amen.
according to John. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb, both of them running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping in to look, he saw the linen cloth lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God, and we can trust it. Thanks be to God. I like this reminder to yeah, we'll share it with everybody. <clears throat> so I want to begin uh, today by wishing everybody, again, a very joyous Easter. Uh, I was reminded this week of something I had thought of before, which is, um, simply this, that, that we have a word for when we fall out of happiness. We can take a, a, the, um, the prefix un and attach it to happiness, and, and happy becomes unhappy. And it's almost as if there's a switch, happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy, that can, that can happen back and forth. And some of those are emotions that we, that we experience ourselves uh, on, a, on some type of daily basis. I'm currently living in a house with my wife and three kids, and two of those kids are two and four, and you can believe me, we experience happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy throughout the day. It just happens, especially when they're playing together. Um, and so I know as we gather around our smart devices, our computers, our phones, our, our TVs, uh, there's probably some unhappiness um, that, is, that is settled inside of us. And so what I, what I want everybody to, to kind of come to the rest of, the, of our worship time today with is, is sort of a sense of joy. And I remind everybody of this joy that God gives us for what he has done for us. For there is no prefix that we can put in front of joy to create the opposite. There's no joy, unjoy, joy, unjoy. Instead, joy has to be replaced by something else. Whether it be fear, or misery, or anger, or loneliness. And sure, those, all of those are, are emotions that I'm sure we are all experiencing to some level today. But... But what we, are, what we are called to do today is to, is to come to the rest of this worship and, and celebrate the joy of this special resurrection day. And so with that, we'll, we'll turn to our text here, John 20, uh, 1 through 18. And it's really interesting that, that our celebration this morning is going to begin with a missing body. Okay. John 21. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, early while it was still dark. This is actually where we got the term early riser from. No. <laughs> Please don't tell anybody I said that. So. The stone had been removed from the tomb. She ran and went and told Simon Peter and the other disciple, 
the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid them. And so Mary, here in distress, is in distress because she has experienced something that's brand new this very first Easter day. And it's simply this, that after Jesus' resurrection, he never quite seems to be in the place that we last left him. So she hurries, she tells the other disciples to come and to witness this new reality. And, and at this point, Mary and the gang are simply unaware that from this day on, God will always be on the move. I remember being in seminary and, uh, and being taught by a professor who had been in vocational ministry for decades that it becomes increasingly challenging year after year to present a message on these special occasions. That, that after, after you, there's only so many different ways you can, you can tell the story and preach the story in, in captivating ways. And so I have good news for everybody. I have nothing new to present today. This is all going to be stuff we know. And in fact, it's interesting to me that Mary's experiences are so relevant to my experiences with Jesus even today. That this, this old story is, is so familiar in my own experience, and I'm sure with yours as well. I mean, here, here's, here's Mary experiencing this very first day after the resurrection of Jesus. And, and so she realizes that not only is he not where he last left him, not only is he not where she expects him to be, but, but when she discovers this, her first reaction for not being able to find Jesus is to gather the gang and then blame somebody else, right? And this is not a terrible reaction for Mary. Right? She's caught off guard. She, she's there this, this very early in the morning, the day after the Sabbath. And, and, and there's a lot of scholars that question, was she there to tend the body after this three-day uh, period? Was she there to, to take the body herself? The truth that we know for a fact is that there's this divine secret at play. And that, that Mary and the team is, is unaware of. And what this story teaches us is that we can be face-to-face -face with God, looking at him. He could be right under our noses, and yet it can be so difficult at times to recognize him. And in the story, that's, that's how this divine secret is playing out. Here in, in verse 13, the, the angels who know of Jesus' resurrection ask Mary, why is she weeping? Mary then turns around and, and is encountered face to face with Jesus, and he poses the exact same question. Woman. Why are you weeping? He takes this one step further and adds, Whom are you seeking? Again, drawing parallels with my own experience, Mary still doesn't recognize that she is she's face to face with a person, the very person whom she is seeking. And so she explains to, to Jesus that if you're the man who's taken away, Give him back to me. Give me back my Jesus. And I, I felt that before. Where is my Jesus? Give him back to me. And yet it's so encouraging that, that in this moment, Jesus doesn't explain. Yo, Mary, it's me. Jesus doesn't rebuke Mary for this position. But instead, he simply states her name, Mary. And she instantly recognizes him. I find it easy to stand on this side of history and judge a lot of the characters that are in our gospel stories and to think to myself, yeah, you know, if, if, if I were in Peter's shoes, I wouldn't have denied Jesus three times. Or if I were in Mary's shoes here, I would have instantly recognized that this was Jesus right in front of me. But I oftentimes wonder how silly we humans look to the, to the divine heavenly beings who, who have seen Jesus sitting on his throne like, watch us wandering this world at times, seeking and, and asking and, and, and looking for Jesus, all the while he's right in front of our face, nudging us, asking us to our face, hey, who are you seeking? And so Mary, frustrated by not being able to find Jesus where she left him, missing out on recognizing him face to face, she is redeemed here in verse 17. That after Mary recognizes the face of the Lord, she, she is given instructions not to cling to him, but to be on the move herself. And Mary is, is redeemed in this 
fact that she is willing to go and be on the move, to share this good news, and to really to share in the joy that the Lord is alive. And this, is, this is the first encounter. This is the first Easter. And Mary's story here is a good representation of our normal, of, of what life looks like for us on the other side of the resurrection. What life is like on the other side of the resurrection for God's people. And so, as believers, we'll find that at times that, that, that Jesus is, is on the move, that he's never quite content with just staying where we want him to stay, right? And, and, and sometimes when we re-encounter him in a, in, a, in a context that we weren't expecting, it can be hard to see his face, even when we're face-to-face -face with him. But, but we take... We take great comfort and joy in the fact that all he needs to do is speak our name. But if so, if so, we must be prepared to be like Mary. To not be, be content in simply clinging on to our own recognition of God, but ready to move for him. To be on the move, on mission, in ministry for Christ. And this is our normal. And we've, we've all kind of been introduced to this term, new normal. As we, as we dealt with this, with this COVID-19 pandemic, we're all used to this, this new normal. And it's, it's scary and uncomfortable for us. But it also allows us an opportunity to see Easter through a different lens. At this time that we're living in, allows us an opportunity to, to see this Easter story as a story of immunity. You see, uh, one of the big questions surrounding this virus is, once somebody recovers from it, are they immune to the virus? Or is, is, is an uh, expecting mother who is uh, recovered from the virus, is she able to pass that immunity on to her children? This is the way a lot of viruses work, and this is the way that, that physicians all around the world are hoping that, that this particular strain works as well. And so we, we come to this Easter with this, this new understanding of immunity and this new joy found in, in Jesus' act on the cross and his resurrection. That he takes on death, he lets it do its worst, and then he overcomes it and to show us all that, that he is immune to death. That is what is at heart in the resurrection story. And here's the best part. As children of God, Christ passes that immunity on to us, that we will not have to taste death. And so I encourage you to, to take heart this Easter, even though it's a bit of an odd one. I have to admit myself that, that I've had some unhappiness settling within myself. This is my first opportunity to ever preach an Easter message. And I definitely didn't imagine it would look like this, me staring into a telephone. I thought I would be surrounded with, with, with my church friends and family. And yet, and yet I, I'm filled with joy of this, of this normal that we are exposed to. And so I believe that we need to carry forward this year. And remembering that, that our experience of, of seeking and at times misunderstanding God is, is natural, is normal. And, and that, that God does not rebuke us in that. But instead, as we continue to seek him out, is willing to call us by name. And when we are called by name, we must be ready to be on the move. So while we're experiencing this, this new normal of our world today, I want to encourage you to take comfort in our old normal, which has been established for us by Jesus Christ, God himself. In him, there is no such thing as unjoy. Let it be so. All God's people say amen.
quick reminder that uh, we are still um, serving um, on mission here uh, at Manchac UMC. I want to say thank you to all of you who have been diligent in, in your gifts and offerings. Um, you, can, you can give to the church still through the website, and we thank you for, for mailing checks in as well. So thank you for continuing to support this mission, this mission that is for all of us, even as this uh, pandemic uh, uh, continues on. Let's go ahead and, and, uh, and leave with this blessing. We worship a God who is immune. He is immune to death, and he passes that immunity on to us, his children. He calls us by name so that we will recognize him. Let us celebrate this, this old normal, which has been in existence by him through his resurrection. We are so joyful for this truth. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.